Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, uh, bye weeks coming at a good time for us. Uh, we're in essence about halfway through, a little bit more than halfway through. When you think of all the all the practices we had in fall camp, with four weeks prior to to playing Stanford and then playing uh, five games, uh, it comes really probably at a good time. I'd rather have it come after a, a win, uh, so you don't have a bad taste in your mouth for a couple of weeks. But uh, it's not, so we uh, have. This week, we're going to spend some time on Iowa State and then quite a bit of time on ourselves with our younger players as well as with our older guys, just kind of shoring up some things, doing some self-scout, doing some um, some technique work. But uh, these kids also need some rest. They need to get their bodies right because once we come back, then we've got uh, a bunch of games in a row with not an open week. So uh, we've got to get their minds fresh. We've got to get their bodies fresh, but we still have some work to do, and, and we'll spend an awful lot of time with our uh, younger players uh, this week. So it comes at a good time for us. Speaking of those younger guys, who are some names and players you are looking forward to getting a deeper look at this week? Uh, there's a bunch of guys for sure. Uh, in the offensive line, Andrew Line Gang is somebody that I'm really excited about because I think he will be a really, really good player here um, in short time. And he's not he's down with the varsity right now as a true freshman offensive lineman. You don't see that very often. So I'm excited about uh, uh, what he's going to be able to do. Um, you know, we're, we're looking at obviously at Jake Rubley quite a bit this week, give him some snaps and Max Marsh uh, from the quarterback standpoint. Uh, those guys stick out to me on offense. Uh, DJ Giddens uh, on offense running back that uh, we think is going to be a really talented guy that just needs repetition. And, um, you know, and then defensively, um, Damon Alalio is a good, good player uh, as a defensive tackle that, uh, Needs to go against guys like uh, Line Gang and and Hecht and Gillum uh, this week, and uh, Bull Palmer and Keenan Gaskin are going to be good inside linebackers. They need reps, and Crew Jackson's a, a long, athletic outside linebacker that uh, we're excited about. Desmond Purnell, Marvin Martin are good young safety guys that we're excited about. So it's a bunch of guys, and I'm sure I'm missing out on some too. Chris Tennant is going to get a lot of uh, reps this week with kicking and punting. So I'm excited for Chris because I think he's a really talented guy. So kind of the list goes on and on, but uh, uh, you know, for us today, we'll work some Iowa state and then those guys will go against each other for a period of practice too. Now that you've had a chance to get a deeper look at the way you played in the last, uh, last game and the Oklahoma state game, what are just some things you do want to shore up on defense before you play Iowa state? Uh, biggest thing is getting back to some basics. Uh, Tackling and getting off blocks are the two biggest things and letting the guys play faster. Uh, and some of that is us as coaches um, probably trying to do too much. Uh, and, and we've talked about that as a defensive staff of, uh, of letting them play a little bit more like they did against Stanford. And then their bodies were fresher against Stanford and Southern and Nevada. Uh, but uh, uh, maybe not trying to be as perfect as just let them go out and play and execute uh, um, our base rules and principles, but uh, bottom line, we have to play faster. And sometimes you can uh, kind of paralyze their mind by having too much thoughts going in there. Uh, but we also have to get off blocks and tackle better. Coach, <clears throat> three man front was really good for the non conference. Are people catching up to it, or is it just the things you just listed? You know, I think it's it's a lot of the things that I that I listed. A lot more teams in our league are doing it, and so. Um, the one thing that is unique is we haven't given up the explosive plays, uh, which we did last year. Uh, you know, obviously, last year was a unique unique year, uh, but we aren't giving up the explosive play, and that's the encouraging thing. And, you know, I think the longest run we've given up is 28 yards, which is way, way too much, and that still comes down to tackling. That still comes down to getting off a block. We've given up less explosive plays, but probably too much in that nine to 14 range where it's probably just, why didn't we make that tackle? Why didn't we keep that cup? Why didn't we um, converge on the ball carrier or converge on the receiver quicker? And, you know, we went back and looked as a staff, we weren't playing as fast for sure on Saturday, really good Oklahoma team. Let's not be mistaken there as we were against Stanford and flying through their different offenses, obviously, uh, both talented teams. But so we've got to go back to, to getting our bodies right and then playing faster with better technique. Notice if you used a four-man front at all on Saturday. Why well, was that? Now with the defensive end issue, does that yeah. bring into that? 
Um, it does and it did. Uh, the other thing was the tempo with which OU was just getting lined up, maybe not snapping the ball, but not subbing as much as some teams do and just getting lined up really quickly. Uh, and you know, we'll work both uh, fronts again this week um, with our younger players because we have some guys that uh, are tailored more to the four down. But you're right, with us down Bronson and down uh, Khalid, um, it, it becomes a, a factor. And uh, um, it'll we I don't know how long Bronson's going to be out. It's not long term, but I'm not sure how long he's going to be going to be out. But uh, some other guys, Felix going to have to play more snaps. Uh, Nate's going to have to play a lot more snaps. Spencer's going to have to play. Uh, Trussell's going to have to play more snaps. It's going to it's going to tax us a little bit. After going back and watching the film, Skyler's injury took the run game away from him. Did it force him to kind of trust his receivers were going to find a way to get open? Well, we talked uh, late in the week when we had thought he had a chance to play uh, that he needed to be, you know, really smart with what he does um, outside the pocket and make sure he knew where his check downs were, make sure he knew where his you know, safety valve receivers were um, because I, I didn't want him running around and ad living um, but I didn't want to, I didn't say that to him either because you, you know, you want the, you want the young man to say, Hey, I'm cleared to play. Let me go play. I think it made him a better player to be honest with you uh, on Saturday. And I was, you go back and look at that game. That kid played really, really well. Uh, and uh, Skyler's a tremendous football player and we missed him for, for a couple of weeks. Uh, Will and Jaron did a nice job, but there's a six year guy that's done this for an awful long time that knows the receivers, knows the offense. And uh, I'm excited, even though we suffered a disappointing loss, I'm excited about where we can go with him only probably getting better. Uh, but uh, he stayed in the pocket and did a great job continuing to look downfield. You've had a chance now to kind of. Uh digest Saturday. Do you think that the, the aggression on offense is something we're going to see more of? Well, I'm not sure what you mean truly by aggression, other than the fact that we knew we had to score points against these guys. Every game's different. Um, you know, we knew Oklahoma was going to put up points. Um, I didn't know what Nevada was going to do. I didn't know what Stanford was going to do, but the game as those things played out, we were going to do a good enough job on defense that you could be probably more conservative on offense. Um, but in our league, you have to be more aggressive because there's a lot of talented offenses out there. And uh, when you have an experienced quarterback, you you want to not hold them back or hold him back. And we talked about that with the receivers and the offensive line, that if we had some of those situations where we could stay on the field, I trusted those guys. And I trusted the, the, the six-year quarterback that – you know, fourth and four, we ought to be able to convert, you know, fourth and fourth and eight, a little bit tougher, but you know, I, I've, I've been in the situation a few times and um, I haven't second guessed myself, but I also know you need touchdowns to win. I go back to two situations last year against West Virginia. We took a field goal to go up three to nothing, fourth and two, same situation. Do I second guess myself? Should have gone for touchdown. Well, we've got our points. Whatever. A few weeks later, we have to answer a drive of Iowa State that they go down and score. We take it all the way down at first and goal at the three. It's fourth and goal at the two. And I didn't second guess myself. Mess is like, we've got to play. Let's go. Don't get it. Boy, you should have taken points. Or why would you do that? I was not going to do that this year. If we were going to be in that situation with a veteran offense, we're going to go try to get touchdowns. Now, if it's fourth and eight, maybe it's a different story. But fourth and two, I hope we have enough plays that we can, you know, dial something up and execute. And can you evaluate Cooper Beebe's game for us now that you've gotten a chance to yeah. like watch film? Cooper played really well, uh, and he's playing at a really high level. He's playing at an all-conference level, uh, and I think there's more in Cooper. I think he can be um, uh, even better than he's played, but he's playing really high level. Did you discuss uh, up tempo when you got the ball with the ten-minute mark? With, uh, at the 10 minute mark, I'm trying to think we, we always are aware of that. And I know that we gave Skyler a couple of different options, but some of it was a little bit based on were we inbounds, were we out of bounds, um, was the play clock rolling, play clock rolling or not. Uh, I wanted to make sure 
that he felt comfortable in everything that we did too, and not get too far ahead of ourselves, not just for that game, but for the next seven or six or seven or eight games. And so it's always talked about with Skyler, but I thought Skyler had complete control of, of what we were doing out there. Your opening drives of the third quarter, the last three games have averaged one yard, no first downs, no points. Yeah. Is that kind of a, uh, a self-scouting situation or earlier adjustments to your opponents? How do you, how do you address well, that? Well, we should have had an 80 yard touchdown on the third play of the second, uh, second of the third quarter. And we had a miscommunication uh, between two great football players and Skylar Thompson and Deuce Vaughn. We have an 80 yard touchdown or whatever it was, 78 yard touchdown. And they, those two had a misconnect or it's a touchdown. There was nobody in the middle of the field. Um, that's not a, that's a, a miscommunication between the two guys. It's not something that uh, you, you look at and say, boy, what are we doing wrong to start the second half? Wow. I mean, we had things dialed up. We just miscommunicated for those two guys. And those are our best two guys. So that that just going to happen. It happens all across uh, uh, all levels of football. We uh, have been better in certain times on defense. Weren't as good this time, but I, I was afraid sooner or later they were going to figure us out because we played them pretty well. Uh, in the in the uh, uh, first half, uh, Oklahoma, but uh, something that we for sure got to be better at when we come out the second half. And just your current defensive end situation, what's Cody Cody Steffelbein's progress been like? Um, he's getting better. Um, not probably quite uh, ready, just simply because he moved over from tight end so late in the in the process. But he's going to get a bunch of reps this week, and he's getting closer. And 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 I hope there's enough improvement this week that he might be able to get into the mix, whether it's against Iowa State or hopefully soon after. You know, some of it was having Skylar back, but do you feel like the receivers took a step forward against or in the last game against Oklahoma? Well, when Skylar's throwing it around and feeling really confident like he was, everybody's a viable option. And um, when your opportunity comes, um, he's going to put it on you. You got to make a play. And uh, he put it on guys and, and uh, we made plays and uh, he knew where his safety valve was. I mean, he knew what we were doing with Landry. He knew what we were doing with, with Deuce Vaughn. If they took away a vertical that we were trying to get to Malik or Philip or somebody else that, okay, it's not there right now, rather than holding it and taking a sack, it's not there right now. I'm going to get the thing out of my hand. And everybody knew they were a viable option. And I think that's going to help us moving forward. Daniel Matter, baby, was that a case where he, he took his couple of snaps and realized he couldn't go? Yeah, we were we had a small package for him because he was thought he could go some. Uh, he didn't practice all week. And so I always I shouldn't say he practiced very, very limited on Thursday and thought there was a few things that he can do. Uh, made a big, big catch. But um, just the the way the game was going, uh, I just I don't think he was going to be the best option for us, and we need to get him healthy. One more question on the defense. When you go with the three three five this year, is it difficult against Big 12 teams because that is something they do see quite a bit in this league? You bet. Uh, and a, a lot of people have specific answers to things. And, you know, we also go back and look at what – we've done in the past we weren't very successful against iowa state running four down last year a lot of things went into that taking two linebackers on the trip probably was the biggest thing that went into that uh, but the year before against four down we were pretty successful well it wasn't the greatest weather day here so everything yeah, iowa state's the prime example simply because uh, they do a lot of what what we're trying to do on defense there's a there's a, f a few similar a few differences but more similarities and differences but that is no question in the back of our mind of because they see this every day in practice. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of teams that that are doing this that are having success. If you do what you do, it still comes down to execution. It still comes down to that's my gap or that's my man or I have to get off a block and I have to make tackles in space. And that's something we have to continue to improve, improve on. Two more quick ones for you. Malik Knowles, how much confidence do you think he's playing with as a return man right now after the uh, success he's had? Ton of ton of confidence and um tons of credit to the the guys that are blocking on that because we um made some great blocks. We've got a lot of veteran guys in the back of that with uh uh Lenners and Allen and, and Fletcher uh, 
creating some seams. And then Eric Hommel's done some really good things on there. Um, Landry always is. Ross, Cade, there's a bunch of guys that are, that are a big factor in that. Phillip, as far as being an off returner and knowing, how, you know, because there's a sequence to what he does as well. Uh, we spend a lot of time on it uh, and always have since I've been here. And I know previous to that, they spent a lot of time on, on the return game. Um, you just don't see very many opportunities as much anymore in the kick return game. So many kickers are so good to kick it out of the end zone. Uh, but, you know, we were fortunate enough that kicked it from the 20 and we worked that situation a lot of kicking it from the 20 because there's more distance for you um, because kickers try to kick it and kick it deep. There's more distance, which sometimes helps you. And it did. Speaking of the wide receivers, um, obviously they had a big game, but how, how helpful is that going to be going forward? Do you think now putting that on film too, as far as the help helping the running game, just. Well, it's going to help. And we still feel like there's more guys that can contribute. You know, um, we're, I, we really feel that Sebastian's getting healthier. Um, you know, everybody, nobody forgets about Seabass for sure. But what some people fail to realize is that was a December injury. That's usually a nine month injury uh and sometimes longer and he's starting to gain the strength and starting to gain the confidence that he's going to be a factor for sure this year um Cade Warner is going to continue to to grow in our system and be a factor uh Tyrone Howell is going to continue to learn our system and be a factor Jalen Travis Keenan Garber made a big play so uh I, I'm I like where we're headed as long as we continue to work and continue to to understand that when my opportunity comes and I don't know when that's going to be, I've got to be ready to deliver. You think that's going to in turn help the run game? You bet. I hope it does. Yeah. Spread people out a little bit more. You have an update on Bronson Massey. Yeah. He's, he's out for uh, a while. I, I don't know if that's two weeks or if that's four weeks, I would say that would be the max it would be. So two weeks is an outside shot at Iowa state, you know, four weeks, you know, obviously he'd miss a few games. Um, but uh, it's an upper upper body injury that we feel like he's going to recover from. It's just a matter of, is it going to take two to four weeks? You know, and can we, can he, can he do enough rehab to get himself potentially ready for, I would say he might be able to. And with the bad tackling on defense, is it possible that the guys on defense are thinking about what happened to Daniel green and the two ejections and that may be leading to bad form? I don't think so. I, I really don't. Um, you know, I, we, we work so many fun, fundamental and tackling drills. Um, but you guys are smart enough to realize, well, tackling is the biggest lost art in football. I mean, how many of the six catches that Landry made, he made three or four guys miss on every one of his catches. And those are good players that he's making miss and Malik's making guys miss. And everybody knows Deuce Vaughn makes everybody miss a little bit. It's the lost art in football that typically the team that tackles best in even games or this is a team that's going to win. And the hard thing is because of the Daniel green situations and stuff and concussions, we can't go out there and say Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Hey, we're going to the ground. Now we're tackling these dudes and we're going to the ground. What if a kid has an AC separation or what if the kid uh, hurts himself doing that? I mean, there's so many things that make it harder to um, truly tackle to the ground in practice. Now we tackle donuts and we tackle popsicles and, and we form up on each other, do everything we can. Um, some of it is just more trusting your angles and knowing if I'm coming inside out and I got to trust that guy's coming outside in that he doesn't cut me off. And that's what we did early in the season really well. We have to get back to that. Season, you had kind of repeatedly mentioned that you thought Tayton could be a weapon for you, but I mean, has he been even better than you thought maybe up to this point? Yeah, he's been really, really solid and uh, kicking with a lot of confidence. And that's, uh, you know, I think he's missed one that he's probably mad at because it was a, a chip shot for him. Um, but he's able to now when he gets into a, a, even a small rut at practice, figure it out on his own. And uh, that, that's really great for, for kickers to be able to do because there's not a bunch of guys that know a ton about kicking uh, on the staff. And those guys use so many outside sources to help them out. But uh, he's kicking with a lot of confidence. You mentioned the one chip shot, and that is like the shortest one that he kicked is the one that he missed. And I don't think he, when we talked to you about the first time, you didn't know at the time whether it was a bad snap or was it actually did he just maybe. He's overswung. Oh. Yeah. And then 
follow up that's not actually on that, but did uh, you said you hoped that Big 12 would at least reach out to you about that onside kick? Did they ever give you a call? I know they did with with Gene. Uh, I, I know that Gene had a conversation. I know Gene's out of town. Um, so it, it's not going to change. We'll leave it at that. How much do you need to address the mental side of sport when you deal with a guy like Jacardier who fumbles on his own? Like yeah, him? everybody needs the mental side of sport. That's one of the reasons that we have guys like Ben Newman uh, in, in a program and guys need to, um, to take advantage of, of guys like Ben that can help them through some of those things. So, you know, Jacardi doesn't mean to fumble. He, he, it was a technique error as well, had it in the wrong arm, um, things that, you know, we're teaching, but you're going to make mistakes. And, uh, unfortunately it was, a, it was at, at a really poor time, but, uh, um, we've got to continue to believe in the kid and we got to have continued support for the kid because, um, he cares. And that's one thing I know about Jacardia. He cares. I don't know if tentative is the right word, but since he's one more flag away from having to miss an entire game was, was Daniel not himself at linebacker on Saturday? Um, I think it was more Oklahoma. I don't think he, th I don't think he thought about it. Uh, uh, on Saturday, um, and uh, you know, it'd be a question for him maybe in, in due time. But uh, it's got a way on him. There's no question about that. And we try to do some of those drills against um, things that don't move, and that's the hard thing. It's easy to do drills when that popsicle or that donut's not going to move. But you know, the hardest thing for all of us, and this is not to say that the calls were wrong at all, is when the target changes, you know, offensively or defensively, the target changes. It doesn't stay the same. And kids lower their shoulders and lower their helmets and uh, both sides of the ball do it. And um, that's the hardest thing I know from an officiating standpoint to be able to decide is, uh, I, I know one thing, there was no intent on Daniel's part on either time that he got uh, ejected for targeting. All that being said, that's the rule. And with crown of the helmet, we've got to keep his eyes up. You know, every year is different. Sometimes teams have more injuries than other teams do. Uh, first question is, are there more injuries with, with this team at this stage of the season than in previous years? You know, uh, I, I don't know that for a fact. There's always going to be those injuries that you're like, boy, we're getting hammered at this position. Um, and this year it happens to be defensive end more than any spot, but, uh, um, bigger, faster, stronger doesn't always mean more durable. And, and that's the thing that when, when we played, there weren't as many of these injuries back in, uh, the eighties and even the nineties. And all of a sudden now with the advent of so much strength and conditioning and so much speed and explosiveness and, and the weight training, I think it's been great for guys to be able to get bigger, faster, stronger. I don't know. There, there, there's probably something to that from an injury factor because you see it not not at Kansas State. You see it across the landscape of all of football. You, you mentioned uh, obviously Bronson and and Bebe and obviously there's there's Skyler who were uh, maybe some some a few other guys that you're really going to keep an eye on during the week to become healthier. Reggie Stubblefield. Reggie's a really good football player. And he played a little bit in Stanford and a little bit against Southern Illinois and had kind of a big game against Nevada and got injured and missed the trip to Oklahoma State and was coming back and, and got a handful of snaps against um, OU this week will help him. And uh, you guys saw he's got a cast on his hand. That's once one thing, but he's got some other ailments. Uh, that we've got to get him healthy because he allows us to play a true nickel defense um, that uh, we have to be able to get to. How much more progress can Skyler make over the next 10 days? Uh, a bunch, just with practice time, you know, that he's missed all the practice time, all the timing with tight ends and receivers and stuff. That's what I'm excited about because I think his he played a really, really good game, and I'm so excited for him, but his best football is going to be in front of him still. I think this is kind of one of these bizarre things this week where, you know, both you and Iowa State happen to have your open date the same week. So with that, do you kind of treat this like you did North Dakota State where you kind of had that time in between the semifinal and championship game? 
Never would think about that. Different circumstances probably as well. Uh, for us, it's a chance to get a bunch of coaches out on the road for starters. Uh, I'm sure they're going to work on us just like we're going to work on them. But I also know that you got to get your bodies healthy because all of us, this next game's an important game, but then there's the next one. And that's the most important one. I mean, there's so much season left that uh, you want to make sure that you guys, you position yourself health wise to be as good as you can for the next seven weeks. All right. Appreciate it. Thanks. Have a good week, everybody.